Okay, here we'll look at enzymes, which are very specific types of proteins. So we see here in the title slide our enzyme located the dark uh, gray molecule here, and we have our substrate being broken down into two end products. Remember, enzymes can break things apart as well as assemble them. And hopefully this will make a little more sense at the end of this video lecture. So in general, what are enzymes? Well, enzymes are helper protein molecules. So all enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. Uh, here we see a disaccharide being broken apart with enzymes into two you know, monosaccharides. So chemical reactions for life, enzymes are involved in the building of molecules or the synthesis. Here we have two independent molecules uh, taking in energy to form this bond, this synthesized molecule, and the opposite of that would be breakdown. It's very important we have enzymes as part of our digestive system to help us release some energy here throughout the digestive process. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that must be present for a chemical reaction to occur. So here we have reactants producing our energy level, our end products. So this is a minimum amount of activation energy. This is the minimum amount of energy we need to obtain in order to produce our end products. So this activation energy can be greatly reduced in the presence of enzymes. Now catalytic converters relating it to cars here. Uh, so internal combustion engines have catalysts, which accelerates chemical reactions. And there's a catalytic converter in the internal combustion engines. And this helps speed up the reaction that occurs to help reduce some of the emissions that are produced. Now mechanisms uh, for enzyme action, well the enzyme must bind to the substrate. The product is formed at a lower activation energy and the product will then be released. So enzymes are important proteins for living things and enzymes are a protein that changes the rate of the chemical reaction. They can speed up chemical reactions allowing biological functions to occur at a much quicker rate and at reduced energy, allowing you to be able to survive. So this is a great summary slide here, where chemical reactions in living organisms require enzymes to do work. The enzymes speed up reactions or catalyze them. So let's look at this in a little more detail. The red line here shows the reactants and the amount of energy required without enzymes. So this is the activation energy here without an enzyme. It's producing the end products. Now, in the presence of enzymes, we see that the amount of activation energy is greatly reduced. In this case, not only is the energy reduced, but the time to produce the end products is also reduced. So in this example, we have less amount of energy required and a quicker time to produce the end products. However, if we look at the beginning and the end, we start in the same place and we end up in the same place. However, for biological purposes, Sometimes there could be too much energy required in, if we didn't have enzymes, and if we did not have enzymes, we would not be able to perform the necessary functions uh, for life. So here again, enzymes are reducing the activation energy, and in this case, also reducing the amount of time. This is the overall energy released during the reaction. You see that's basically the same with or without the enzymes. Now some key uh, vocabulary when we're using uh, the enzymes in these very specific types of proteins. Our substrates, which are the molecule the enzyme works on, the end product, which is what the enzyme helps produce at the end of the reaction, and this active site, which is a very specific shape, which allows a very specific substrate to bind to that. So that's the active site here. And it'll be different for every enzyme. One enzyme cannot bind to a bunch of different substrates, it can only bind to the same type of substrate. So kind of just give you that general progression of the catalytic cycle. We have our active site with our enzyme. Uh, here we have our sucrose, which consists of glucose and fructose bonded together. This is a disaccharide, two um, carbohydrates, two monosaccharides, two sugars bonded together. This enzyme has a very specific shape for sucrose, and it's forming this enzyme substrate complex. This binding is occurring. Then the substrate enzyme places stresses on the sucrose I'm sorry, on the glucose fructose bond of that sucrose molecule, and that ultimately will break the bond. And we're seeing that breaking of the bond and that product's being released in the form of glucose and fructose. And here's the enzyme now open and able to bind to another sucrose molecule to go through this process again. This again kind of shows you just that general same progression here. Again, with the enzyme, a lot less energy required than without the enzyme. 
Enzymes are proteins. You keep that in mind. All enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. Enzymes typically end with the suffix ase or ace. And it can help you identify what substrate it'll break down. So for example, lactase breaks down lactose. Maltase breaks down maltose, and so on and so forth. Amylase breaks down starch because uh, amylase is a type of starch. But you can see all the others, uh, lipase breaking down lipids, protease breaking down proteins. Kind of gives you an indication for if you're looking at something that you're not quite sure. This may help you identify it as a potential enzyme. And it may also give you some hint as what substrate that breaks down. Here's that image from the beginning on the title slide. So each enzyme is with a specific helper to a very specific reaction. Each enzyme needs the right shape for the job. And this is why we need uh, our proteins to have the proper shape to perform the proper function. This specific enzyme binds to this specific substrate and is able to break this down into its individual products. Kind of use the concept of a lock and a key. Uh, this is very important for the proper shape to perform the proper function. So the shape of protein allows the enzyme substrates to fit. As a rate, you have a very specific enzyme for each specific reaction that occurs. Also important to remember that these enzymes are not consumed or changed by the reaction. They're only used temporarily. They can be reused again and again uh, for the same reaction with other molecules. As a result, your body needs very little enzymes to help, to help its many reactions that occurs. So they're able to bind, break down, or synthesize, and repeat the process again and again and again. The body doesn't need to go through and make more enzymes necessarily. There's an enzyme, this active site is a very small area of the enzyme. So this is our giant enzyme. This is the actual binding site, and our catalytic site here reduces the chemical activation energy. And this can literally allow these enzymes to kind of move and break things apart or synthesize them together. But it'll come back and to perform that function again. Lastly, changes in protein's environment can cause the protein to what we call denature. Denaturing is losing its three-dimensional shape. So here we have our functional protein. We add heat, we denature that. This changes the shape, and therefore this protein, this enzyme, can no longer perform its proper function. So shape determines function. If we change the shape, that protein can very often lose its function in this process of calling this protein would denature.